This is a Peugeot 3008, a car I've driven quite a bit over the last couple of years and a car I'm quite fond of. But this particular 3008 is a little bit different because it has a brand new eight-speed automatic gearbox. Now, if you enjoy the videos that we do, please make sure you subscribe. I know everyone says it on YouTube, but please make sure you do. And make sure you click on the little bell icon so you get notifications every time we upload a new video. And make sure you share this with others. Make sure you comment, make sure you like this video, and make sure you visit newmotoring.com. It really does help, and it's great to hear what you think of the videos. I can't believe it's been more than two years since I first drove a 3008. It was October 2016 and the launch was in Italy. And I remember coming away from that launch and thinking, wow, you know, Peugeot has set out to do something different and their hard work has really, really paid off. But they launched it at a time where the automatic gearbox of choice was a six-speed automatic, the EAT6. And that gearbox was nearing the end of its life. But now, Peugeot has put a lot of time and a lot of effort into developing a new eight-speed automatic gearbox, the EAT8, and that is what I have here. What's it like? Well, obviously it has eight gears rather than six, so the gear ratios are slightly shorter, and when you're doing 60, 70 miles an hour, the revs are sitting slightly lower as well. The real difference I've noticed is that it's just a bit smoother. The old gearbox wasn't bad, but sometimes it was a little bit jerky. You notice it when you're going up and down through the gears, you get a little bit of a kick in your back sometimes. This is much smoother, and also the response from the paddles is better as well. You have four engines to choose from. You've got a 1.2 litre turbocharged three cylinder petrol engine with 130 brake horsepower. You've got a 1.6 litre turbo petrol with 180 brake horsepower. You've got a 1.5 litre turbo diesel with 130 brake horsepower and a two litre turbo diesel with 180 brake horsepower. It sounds confusing, but basically, whether it's the lower capacity or the higher capacity petrol or diesel, you have 130 or 180 brake horsepower. It's just with the diesel, you obviously get a bit more torque. Can you have the eight-speed automatic with each of those engines? Well, yes, actually, you can. But you can't have the six-speed manual with each of those engines. You can only get those with the lower capacity petrol and diesel, so with the 130 brake horsepower petrol and the 130 brake horsepower diesel. If you want a bit more poke, it has to be the eight-speed auto. And what about this car? Well, this is a two-litre turbo diesel, so it has 180 brake horsepower, 296 pounds-feet of torque. It will hit 62 miles an hour in exactly nine seconds, and the top speed is 134 miles an hour. And it should get about 57 miles to the gallon. It isn't quick, but it has enough performance. It certainly doesn't feel underpowered. And obviously, because it's the diesel, it has more torque than either of the petrols. It pulls from about 1500 RPM all the way to about three and a half, just under 4,000 RPM. And the red line is 5,000 RPM. If you've got the gearbox in fully automatic mode, when you put your foot to the floor, it will change gear itself just under 4,000 RPM. So if you do want to use the paddles, I'd suggest that's where you change gear as well. Because otherwise, you're just wasting time and making a lot of noise. Down here on the sense console, there's a little button that says Sport. And if you press that, what it doesn't do is pump synthesized engine noise into the cabin like it would do on some other versions of the 3008 and 5008. No, no, it does not do that. What it does instead is sharpen up the throttle response and sharpen up the response of the gearbox. It's actually quite nice because you haven't got that fake noise. You've just got better throttle response, better gearbox response, and you can notice it. It really does pick up better when you press the sport mode. Now, everything else, I think I've covered fairly comprehensively in all of my other 3008 videos. The steering doesn't have much feel, but it's nicely weighted and it responds quite well. The suspension is definitely soft, but it doesn't feel floaty. It doesn't feel lost or confused as soon as you get to a corner. The only time it struggles a little bit is when you go over a really, really sharp bump. If you're accelerating, you can feel the wheels bounce around momentarily and then they settle back down again. And to look at, well, this is a new gearbox, it isn't a facelift, so it is entirely unchanged. And by that I mean it is absolutely brilliant. I really like the way this looks. Inside, 
it feels just as fresh as it did when it was launched. The design, the clever use of materials, the customizable instrument cluster, it feels different to every other SUV on sale. The only real issue I've had is the reversing camera, which is a bit slow and a bit laggy. So for the most part, I've just relied on the mirrors, like you would have done in the good old days. You get a lot of kit for your money as well, and there's actually quite a lot of space. I did a very grown up thing the other day, and I helped move some turf. And it was there I noticed that you can fold the rear seat all the way down, so it's a flat boot floor. I would never normally notice that kind of thing because to be honest, I never need to move the seat so they're flat. I just, just don't need to. But for once, I did. And actually, it is quite useful. The turf is heavy, although I didn't do most of the lifting. I let someone who's 70 do that. Now with the E88 gearbox, prices start at £25,709 for the 130 brake horsepower petrol. £27,679 for the 130 brake horsepower diesel, £29,509 for the 180 brake horsepower petrol, and £31,229 for the 180 brake horsepower 2 litre diesel, which is what I have here. I really like the 3008, as you can tell. And this new gearbox, it isn't 100% perfect, but it has made the car stronger. It is an improvement over the old six speed. Would you buy one? Have you got one of the old six speed automatic Peugeot 3008? Or would you buy something completely different like the Nissan Qashqai? Let me know in the comments below.